Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending December 1st. First up, I have been waiting and waiting for some kind of news on the NASA Mars rover, and I've even been asked about when the next news will be coming out about it. And, unfortunately, NASA keeps leading people on and on and on about the rover. There was a report a couple of weeks ago, and I actually listened to the PBS report, that news will be coming, and at the time they made out that it was really important news coming since then NASA has backed down a little bit but the PBS special said that scientists had to wait until a scientific journal actually published their findings because the rules being that if you submit something to a journal to be published and you release the information ahead of time they will no longer publish your article so they had to keep quiet about it but nonetheless they did go around making to do about it even though they couldn't say anything so basically the NASA show on PBS was 30 minutes of saying we can't say anything and getting everybody all speculating and then meanwhile last week and I saw one of these news articles too which was a rewrite of copy which gets a lot of newsmen in trouble about naturally occurring plastic on Mars and it may be the sign that there's petrochemicals or something like that well it turns out I'm glad I did hold off onto it because it sounded a little suspicious to me. This was from NASAUpdateCenter.us doing a kind of spoof like Onion does and they were a promotion deal that put this together along with uh, they replaced the face on Mars remember the famous face on Mars with the Chewbacca face uh, on one page of their website so it was basically a spoof and sat satire of NASA and NASA got so ticked off about it that they actually asked them to pull the photograph down now they could have probably stood their grounds under spoof and satire and kept the picture up but I guess the guy just didn't want to fight it and um, I guess they could have some grounds if for some reason they could prove that this person with malicious intent was trying to deceive people into believing it was a real NASA report because part of the article he did quote actual officials of NASA and he did dress it up to look like an, an official NASA release but still being that it's a government organization and if you're a government organization or a public figure you have a lot to prove to uh, try to get somebody to back down from spoof or satire being fair use. I guess the guy just didn't want to bother spending the money to fight it anyway and he, he did pull it down but yeah that article about naturally occurring plastic on Mars is just totally bogus and now since then on uh, Thursday NASA even backed down and said well it's not even going to be earth shaking or really super important it's just going to be a regular news release as of here it's going to be Monday December 3rd and I'll give you the link to it it's on jpl.nasa.gov and there's links down below they're going to be streaming it on Ustream as they normally do and giving us whatever information of what the findings are so I'm guessing it's not even they did an exam of samples of soils maybe something that could possibly lead to discovery of life or organic compounds or something but I'm saying it probably sounds another way they're backing down that maybe it's not even anything that's similar to organic compounds it could be just maybe some mineral concentrations that they didn't expect to find or something like that maybe you know maybe sulfur deposits or something so that's my best guess but anyway we will know as of Monday and I will be sure and let you guys know if there is anything whatsoever significant about that I will be reporting that next week if not sooner if it's very significant of course I'll probably post it sooner but I'm not really sure at this time next up this was sent to me by my friend Phil Cuca writer this is about anamorphic illusions and I really love this I'll, I'll post a few of the pictures here of the guy he uh, printed out these pictures that were out of perspective but when you look at them at just the exact right angle they almost seem to pop out with three-dimensional looks to them and the, the nice thing about these optical illusions a lot of the optical illusions once you know it's an optical illusion it kind of spoils it and you never see it again but I don't care how you know that this thing is an optical illusion every time that it's done the correct way your mind still wants to tell you that you're looking at a three-dimensional object and this isn't anything new either I'm gonna post a, a link to an older uh, version of this that was done back in the 1500s and this was from an artist that uh, did a painting it was called, let me look it up here too. Hans Holbein is the Holbein, Hans Holbein, his painting called The Ambassadors, and the painting itself has a picture with a little smudge. It almost looks like kind of like a diagonal smudge in the bottom of the picture, but if you're entering the room from the right angle and look at the painting from an obtuse kind of angle, you will actually see that there's a skull painting and it looks just in the right proportions when you look at it at the right kind of angle it's no longer stretched out and it looks like a perfect skull so that's kind of interesting too and it's something that artists have been doing for quite some time 
Um, they usually do it on purpose. What they do, like in curved surfaces like the Sistine Chapel, they will make the figurines out of proportion a little bit because if they made them in proper proportions, they would actually look out of proportion because of the curved ceiling when you look at them from below. So they purposefully make them a little bit misshapen so that they look correct from the angle being viewed. But this is the opposite way of actually purposefully misshaping something so it looks to be in the right shape when you look at it from a very uh, narrow angle. And last up for this week, I would like you guys to help me out for a change. I've been looking for gadget lists. I like every year around Christmas time to do a gadget list, and I'd like to do one on next week's show. Only I'm having a very hard time finding any kind of top 10 gadget list that isn't just 90% or more or all of them being smartphones and tablets. And I want to get away from smartphones and tablets for a while. We've been inundated with them. So I want you guys to help me out. It doesn't even necessarily have to be an electronic gadget. I would like to get a good selection of mechanical gadgets too or something like an unusual tool or something like that but give me your idea of a couple of items one or two items whatever you think of that I could add to a top 10 list for somebody that's really into gadgets technology geeky type of gifts like that I would like you guys to give me your ideas and I would like a selection too maybe if you could think about it give me like a $25 something in the $25 range and then maybe something in the $300 range so for somebody on a budget what could they get their favorite geek or gadget lover and for somebody that's got a little bit more money to spend what could they give their favorite pick out for something that you would like somebody to give you maybe you've got a couple of things on your Christmas list something not expensive something quite expensive and if it would be given to you, you would like it as a gadget type of gift. So let me know about that. As usual, all the links below to all the articles and everything. And within the next 24 hours, there will be a TDD supplemental. I hope some of you guys are actually tuning into the supplemental. It will be stuff I'm working on for future projects, maybe something that never even is going to appear in the TDD report. But I hope it's something that people that want maybe a little bit extra above and beyond the regular TDD report would be a little bit interested in. So take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.